Once upon a time, the Lizardmen were a very simple faction. Most of their armies were composed of just Saurus warriors and a few large dinos. It was all very predictable and let's be honest, not very exciting. But oh how times have changed and two DLCs later, their roster is wider than ever. Giving these pesky reptiles more tools to play with, making them far more unpredictable and difficult to deal with. So in this shutdown guide, we're going to look at some ways to help us deal with the Lizardmen. This is intended more as a multiplayer guide, but everything translates to campaign as well. So if you're having trouble with these damn dirty lizards, listen up. So let's begin by talking about the general playstyle of the Lizardmen. What's the game plan that they're designed to execute? Well, quite obviously, first of all, they've got a lot of single large monsters, all the different dinos that will distract you and make you think, oh crap, I gotta deal with these. So they'll take your attention away from the rest of the Lizardmen army, and because they're generally quite tanky, they can soak up the damage which would otherwise be poured into your main army. And while this is going on, their tough and versatile front lines will have a good chance of chewing through yours, especially with some of the nice unit combos they can pull. The Lizardmen also have a nice array of harassing units that will wear you down either before, during or after the main fight. And again, they're very capable of just distracting you, forcing you to micro quickly and potentially to make mistakes, as well as spreading poison all over your army, making it harder for your boys to fight. Overall this, they are just going to try to grind you down and outlast you because a lot of their units typically either have lots of armor, lots of leadership or decent health pools. So much like the dwarfs, it can be difficult to break lizardmen units sometimes, meaning they'll probably outlast you and you'll break before they do. So that's the overall basic playstyle of the lizardmen army. But beware, of course, there are many different ways to play every army. And the lizardmen with all their new units now, they've got a lot of tools to play with and a lot of different strategies they may try to pull. They could go full infantry and bring no monsters at all. They could go cav heavy. They could go full Jurassic Park and just bring nothing but large units. There's lots of creative players out there who may try to catch you out. So don't always expect to see this playstyle when you face the Lizardmen. Now for the next section, we're going to take a look at some of the key units of the Lizardmen army. That is, units that are more commonly used by people online or that present a specific problem and can be difficult to deal with. So again, I'm going over key units, not all units, before somebody comments and tells me I've missed a freaking unit. So we'll begin with the Lords, starting off with Gore Rock, the tank of the bunch. Notoriously hard to kill. He's got a lot of defensive stats and can survive really well, especially as he has a shield and is a small target, unlike pretty much every other Lizardmen Lord. He's going to do good damage fighting in crowds as well, so he's just all kinds of problems. But on the upside, he is slow and on foot, so you can just run away from him most of the time. You may need to team some characters up on him, try and shoot him in the back, use some magic anything you can to wear this bastard down. And then we have Krokgar on Grimlock, an elusive damage dealer because he's very hard to keep a hold of with anything in melee. He's armor piercing and anti-large so he can deal with just about anybody, very good at taking out large lords so do be careful with those, especially if he brings the hand of god along. The best hope of taking him down is with missiles of course because we can't keep a hold of him or you can try and slow him down with monstrous infantry. Rest assured, he'll probably be trying to be as disruptive as possible, running all over your army, especially distracting those missiles. You may see the same thing of a Saurus Oldblood, with people making use of his damage resistance ability. That brings us to the Slan, one of the most popular picks for the Lizardmen. These chubby funsters are your magic battle toads that will give you all kind of magical problems. The most common three you might see are Life, Light and Fire, perhaps. Each bringing with them the problems that that magic lore book will bring. Not to mention the damage resistance AoE ability they have, which can be very powerful in certain builds. And as the Slan aren't very good in melee and are a little bit vulnerable, they'll probably come up with a bodyguard unit, very often the Star Chamber Guardians. But lucky for us, just like obese people in mobility scooters, they can't get away from anything very quickly. So shooting missiles and artillery at them is always a good call. And lastly, big old Lord Mazda Mundi, most commonly on his big boy Zlat. He brings the melee damage from the Stegodon, the missile damage from those skinks, and magical powers from him damn self. So he can put a lot of hurt on your army or potentially protect his own army very well. But on the plus side, he's very expensive, which is obviously good for us, means less money on the rest of the army. And he's a big target, so we can blast him down as well. But big target or not, he is still very tough, 
and can rampage all over the place disrupting the crap out of you, so don't think he's going down easy. Now to heroes, beginning with the Skink Chief. You'll most often find him on a Pterodon, sniping enemy characters. So be careful with your Lords and Heroes, if you see a Skink Chief around, there's a good chance he'll try to follow them around and simply wear them down over time. Missiles can deter him well, or of course, flying units. Now if someone's opted for a non-magical Lord like Tic-Tac-Toe, Gorok or Nakai, they're probably going to bring a Skink Priest for all their magical needs. They'll usually be on a pterodon staying out the way, but sometimes they might be used to harass your missiles, but they're not overall great in melee, so they're not a huge danger on the ground. And they're pretty squishy, so any kind of damage will get rid of them. And lastly, everybody's favourite mummified toad, although I think he wins by default, Lord Croak. He can do a little bit of work in melee, as he is unbreakable, but he is of course all about those explosion spells that he has. They're all pretty powerful in their own right, and they're honestly quite easily baited out because they have a pretty slow and big wind-up time. So if you leave one of your expensive units in an obvious place, wait for the player to cast one of these spells, which you'll get plenty of time to see winding up, and then simply move out the way, and hey, you've wasted one of his spells. Otherwise, take him out like any other slan. Now to the infantry, beginning with a mainstay of many Lizardmen armies, the Saurus. Typically Saurus Warriors or Saurus Spears, with shields because they have better melee defense and the protection from missiles. Saurus Warriors are usually on the front line with good damage output and are pretty tough, so they're the perfect front line unit, and Saurus Spears will be taking up the flanks defending from cavalry and monsters, of course. Armor Piercing is a good choice to bring against them on your front line to counter their toughness, as any non-armor piercing low tier infantry will get chewed up by Saurus Warriors. On the plus side though, they are an expensive front line to bring. And often comboed up with Saurus Warriors or out on their own, Red Crested Skinks with their armor piercing damage. These can be great value for money if you get them into the right target, although they're very susceptible to missiles and cav charges. And like any other Skink, they're very quick, so watch out that they don't try to flank up behind you. And when it comes to the Elite, you'll find the Temple Guard. They can deal with just about anybody with their armor piercing and anti-large damage. They're very tough, they've got armor, they've got leadership, they got it all. So whichever way you slice it, they're going to be difficult to get rid of. Even worse, if you get the Regiment of Renown version come your way, the Star Chamber Guardians. They're all that, but just even better. As they are very tough against everybody, it's best to try and avoid them in melee as much as you can, and to try and weaken them with missiles, artillery, and magic before they even get to melee. And when they inevitably do, armor-piercing infantry is going to be your best hope of wearing them down. And when it comes to the missiles, chameleon skinks with their stylish toad hats are the go-to choice. Their combination of stalk, a 360 firing arc, and poison make them a fantastic harassing unit. You won't be able to catch them with infantry, and even slower cavalry and monsters will struggle, so they're very good at baiting people out and wearing them down with their skirmish ability. So faster cavalry and flying units are the best way to take them out, and when you do get a hold of them, they will go down pretty quick. Or you can outrange them with missiles and artillery, as they don't have much health or armor. However, they do have a 40% missile resistance, so missiles can be a bit of a waste of ammo, but sometimes it may be the only choice. Another powerful skirmish choice, the Salamanders. Their anti-large ranged attack can be very good at taking down those large units and even disrupting infantry and slowing them down. Again, they can be difficult to get a hold of as they'll skirmish away, reposition, and start attacking you from range again. They are quite short range though, so any longer range missiles should be able to deal with them okay, or if you can get into melee with a decent unit, they should be able to take them out as they're not that tough in melee. You may also see the Umbral Tide, the Regiment of Renown version, who are just a bit better and have Stalk, making them a more effective harassing unit. Pterodons, another strong harassing choice that are pretty commonly used these days. Great for their skirmish ability and 360 firing, as well as the ability to drop bombs and do a good bit of damage with those. However, they are pretty squishy, so if you got missiles, simply shoot them out the sky, or engage them in melee in the sky or on the ground if they come down, because they do not do very well in melee at all. And when it comes to cavalry, the Cold One Spear Riders are the most common pick. They're not too expensive, and they come with an anti-large bonus, making them great against other cavalry, something that other Lizardmen cavalry will lack. Not to mention they have armor piercing, so they can do some good work cycle charging infantry, but can be dealt with by any of the usual cav dealing means. Preferably, unless you've got an anti-large cav as well, don't get your cavalry to engage them because they'll have the advantage. As a shock cavalry, however, their melee defense isn't great, so they won't do fantastically in a prolonged fight. 
and to some monstrous infantry with the Croxagores. Whether it's the normal ones or the sacred kind, they're both great damage dealers. They'll be looking to smash up your elite infantry, so be careful with them. They don't have a ton of melee defense though, so a good old fashioned spear unit should be able to deal with them fairly well. Armor piercing is preferred, and of course armor piercing missiles can be great for wearing them down. And when it comes to the big boy monsters, you've got the simple feral types like the feral Bastilodon or feral Stegodon, who are going to run around like tanky chariots for the most part. Doing a bit of damage in melee and then running off and attacking somebody else, being disruptive, soaking up damage, and being an all-round pain in the arse. They don't have great leadership though, so if you can break them, you should be able to chase them off. Because they're a high mass unit as well, they can be difficult to keep a hold of, so missiles are of course the choice way to take them down like any large unit really. You may see upgraded versions of these with fancy engine of the gods and thunderous bollocks and all sorts of crazy crap, but they're very much the same deal, just a lot tougher, capable of more damage, they have a ranged attack with all the skinks on their back, and they'll come with some kind of unique ability. For us though, it's get those anti-large units on them, get the missiles and artillery firing at them, that's really all you can do. If you've got some monstrous infantry, you can try and control them and slow them down with those, otherwise just shoot the bastard. The Feral Carnosaur. It's a T-Rex. Everyone's favourite childhood monster is often found plaguing the battlefields, charging around all over the place, disrupting everyone and eating everyone in sight. It's very elusive and hard to keep a hold of, so much like Crocgar, just gun the bastard down. They are anti-large and armour piercing, so be careful with your large units around them. And as they are feral, if you can pour enough damage into it in a short space of time, you may make it go berserk and lose control, helping us get a good matchup on it. And for something that's worth a mention, although you don't see it a ton in multiplayer, the Dread Saurian. Now, while it is basically Godzilla, it can be difficult to get the money's worth out of them because they are such big targets for missiles and artillery, which, if you should see one, is going to be the way to take them down. You need to keep constant pressure up and wear it down, because if it survives into the late game, it's going to have an easy time running around terrorising off all the beaten up units in your army. Honestly, best to try and avoid it as much as you can in melee, because they do so much freaking damage. And lastly, a mention to the Lizardmen artillery units, as they're quite unique. They're unlike anything else any other faction has really, as they are tough monsters first and foremost, so you can't get rid of them easily. They can stay back and be ranged artillery units. They can reposition quickly because they're fast. They can charge in and be a chariot all the same. So they're very versatile in what they can do. Your best hope is going to be getting some anti-large unit into it, or of course missiles, as I've said that 12 million times, but you get the idea. People mostly use them as artillery until the enemy army arrives and then they switch into melee. Perhaps in the late game they'll switch back to artillery, picking off all those routed units and things. Either way, a unique thing to deal with, so a bit of a problem. And speaking of problems, let's now move on to the next section of the guide, where we'll take a look at some of the problems that the Lizardmen army will give you out on the battlefield. So, how will the Lizardmen give us a hard time? Well firstly, it's important to realise they're not a faction that's locked to any kind of playstyle. Like they have to be aggressive like Norska or the Vampires, or they have to be defensive like the Dwarfs or Vampire Coast. They could do either of those playstyles or something in between, they've got a lot of options. Whether it's in their strong Lord and Hero combos or their wide variety of units. This of course can make it difficult to predict what kind of army we should bring to counter the Lizardmen. And while this is true of every faction really, it's a little bit more difficult with the Lizardmen because they've got strong options everywhere. The infantry is good, the monsters are good, the missiles are good, the cavalry is good, the lords and heroes are good. So whatever game plan you try to bring, there's a slightly higher chance than most that you'll get countered by some strong Lizardmen units. You might see a full army of skinks that will overrun you with pure numbers. You may see a heavy ranged army with lots of pterodons, chameleon skinks, bastilodons, solar engines, salamanders all the things to stay away from you that will try and wear you down. Or they may just go full on brute force, bring a bunch of Saurus and Croxagors up front, a bunch of large monsters and absolutely just run you down. However, saying that, most people don't actually utilise all the Lizardmen possibilities and you'll very often just see the general playstyle that I listed earlier. So we need to be sure that we can have a versatile army that can deal with many of the Lizardmen threats. We're going to go over this a bit more in the counters section later, but for now just understand that they're a faction that can be unpredictable in what they bring to the field. Now one general trait of the Lizardmen army for a lot of their infantry and monsters is that they are pretty damn tough, and thus have good endurance through a long fight. Most of these tougher units have a combination of either high health, high armour, high leadership, 
or decent melee defense. None of them really have all of them in good amounts. And that's some of the more key stronger units, but there are plenty of other strong units that are much squishier, like skinks, for example. Any kind of skink, whether on foot or in the air, isn't that tough. So it's mostly the Saurus and monsters that you're worried about. And when it comes to those monsters especially, they don't have great leadership, at least some of the lesser ones, which means if we can route them off and chase them off the map, that's going to save us all the effort of trying to get through their armor and health. So use the old chase-off tactic at every opportunity when you manage to route one of those monsters. As for dealing with the tougher frontline units like Saurus and Temple Guard, I like to personally try to match their toughness. The two criteria I look for in a frontline unit is good leadership and armor piercing. Those two things will help you defeat any Saurus unit and at least do some decent damage to Temple Guard. And it's not that cheaper frontlines can't work, it's just a little more risky, especially if you're trying to protect a core of missiles. So be sure to think about your frontline survivability. And Saurus Warriors do actually have a fair amount of armor piercing damage to their weapon strength, so they can beat up heavily armored units pretty damn well. So don't think that armor is going to save you, it's more about the leadership, I think. Because even if you bring an armor piercing unit, but it has low leadership, the Saurus will wear it down or the monsters will scare it off with fear and terror. It needs good leadership to be able to stick around and stand up to those Saurus warriors. And it's pretty common that Lizardmen players will use their magic and abilities to protect their army mostly with healing and damage resistant shields, making the Lizards even harder to kill. Now this endurance and high damage is what makes the Lizardmen frontlines a big problem, mainly because of the Saurus. But the good thing about Saurus Warriors is that they're actually quite expensive, so you won't see a frontline of more than 3 or 4 units normally, meaning we can kind of match that with the stronger infantry units of whatever faction we've chosen. So you might just see Saurus Warriors as a solid frontline, but as long as we've got the right tools for the job, as I was just talking about, they won't be a problem. You might see Saurus Warriors mixed in with armor-piercing red-crested skinks. This is a way for people to still bring the toughness of the Saurus, but have that armor piercing damage from the Skinks mixed in with those Saurus, and the Saurus will help protect the Skinks as they're not very tough, and they complement each other well. Or if somebody's going all out on their front line, they'll bring Saurus Warriors and mix in Croxagors, which means there's a whole ton of damage on their front line. The Croxagors hit hard, the Saurus Warriors hit hard, you're going to need some anti-large or missiles up there to try and kill those Croxagors off. So counter the tough front lines of the lizard men by bringing tough ones of your own. You don't have to just straight up bring the most expensive units, you could bring a cheap armor piercing unit and mix it in with a monstrous infantry like trolls with their armor piercing, as that combo could be a little bit more versatile, but that may be a little bit more risky because you have less leadership, and as I said, I think leadership is one of the most important things for a front line when facing the lizard men. Otherwise your front line's gonna break, they're gonna pour into the main section of your army and just wipe out all your ranged units that you probably have, and then it's game over. So be sure to think about your frontline strategy, how well are your frontline units going to fare. It doesn't always have to just be the expensive tough units, you could use lesser units and use magic and things to help them out, there's obviously a million different ways to do things. And now let's address the Stegodon in the room and admit that large units are a big problem when facing the lizard men. They're big, they're tough, they hit hard and they can't be freaking contained. Of course, we're mostly talking about single entity large monsters rather than cavalry or even monstrous infantry because, as mentioned, they will draw more attention and absorb more damage. Now, of course, anti-large units are the key to taking these things down, spears and halberds being the obvious choices, but infantry can struggle to hold on to them due to their high mass and ability to just run away from whatever they want. And in most cases, whatever infantry you throw into a fight with these monsters, that infantry is going to take a battery. And if they're a lesser unit, there's a good chance they'll break and thus won't be very effective. Missiles are, of course, one of the best ways to deal with these larger monsters, as they are big targets and missiles are more likely to hit them, and they can't simply use their high mass to escape them. And then, of course, there's things like nets and speed reduction spells to help keep them in that line of fire for a bit longer to help wear them down and focus firing one specific monster rather than trying to shoot all two or three of them at once is usually a good idea. Get one monster off the field and then deal with the next one. And you may want to prioritize the monsters based on which one is the most dangerous. So missiles are the safest bet for taking down single large monsters, but anti-large infantry and anything anti-large really is at least a good deterrent to keep the enemy large units at bay, because most players won't want to leave their large units fighting anti-large units. And then another big part of the Lizardmen game plan these days is all the skirmish units. Usually skinks or salamanders or pterodons, all very evasive and good at staying out the way whilst being able to maintain damage. And not to mention all the poison. 
The most common unit you'll see harassing you is chameleon skinks. With their stalk and vanguard deployment, they're very good at tricking things into thinking they can catch them, and thus baiting them out. Because they poison whatever they shoot at, there's pretty much no infantry that's going to be able to catch them. Slower cavalry is going to struggle, so it's only really fast units like light cav or warhounds or flying units that are going to be able to get a hold of chameleon skinks. And then you've got a similar thing in the air with pterodons. They're very quick. A lot of flying units won't be able to catch them in melee. They'll be slowed down by the poison. They'll be taking damage from all those darts. So you have to be wary when pursuing them. If you think you might be able to catch them, check your speed, check their speed. Are you actually going to be able to catch them or is it a waste of time trying to chase them off? So again, much like dealing with the large, missile units are your best hope really. Even a cheap missile unit can deter them well enough. They're very squishy so they can't take a lot of damage. But if you don't bring any missiles, they're just going to fly overhead, do what they want and wear you down. So you need some kind of missile to try and deter them or they're just going to wear you down over the course of the game. You don't really need to worry if they go into melee. They're not that great. They've got terrible melee defense, no armor. So they could get pretty messed up. You may see Ripodactyls used in a similar way. Of course, they don't have a ranged attack, but they will fly around and harass you and fly off before you can get to them and things like that. But again, missile is going to be the best choice for getting rid of those. So be careful of the flyers. They will wear you down if you let them. If we can get rid of them early, of course, it's going to really limit their damage and they're going to be pretty much useless. So be careful of getting baited out trying to chase pterodons or chameleon skinks because they will outrun you most probably. Not worth chasing them unless you can actually catch them, unless you want to push them away from shooting at a unit that is valuable to you perhaps. And the only other unit you might see used in a harassing skirmish fashion is salamanders or the umbral tide, maybe even razor dons too. The umbral tide especially can be problematic because they have stalks so they can go invisible once they run away or lose track of them. They can keep harassing you all over the shop. These units are much more catchable in melee though and if you can get a hold of them they're not very tough so you can usually beat them up easily enough and they do only fire in one direction so they can't shoot at you while they're running away from you so it's easy to disrupt them and push them back. And the final big problem the lizard men will bring us is that they're pretty spooky. They've got a lot of fear and terror all throughout their army which is of course going to cause problems for our leadership especially if you're a faction with low leadership. Pretty much all of their large units even cavalry and pterodons cause fear with all the large single monsters causing terror as well, even the feral Bastilladon, the cheapest of the bunch. This of course gives them huge advantages in the late game, especially as they have a lot of leadership themselves. They'll wear down your leadership with the fear and they'll be able to charge their single large monsters around, terrorizing all the stuff that's easy to break. Now unfortunately there isn't any easy way to deal with fear and terror other than killing the units that cause it. As I've said already, you can bring higher leadership units to help combat this, any leadership buffs, any immunity to psychology units, it's all going to help you survive these large terrifying monsters. So those are some of the main problems that the Lizardmen army will bring you when you face them on the battlefield, no matter who you're playing as. So now that you know the problems the Lizardmen can give you, you've now got to figure out a way to solve those problems with your chosen faction. That brings us to the next section, which used to be called weaknesses in the previous two shutdown guides, but I'm going to change that now to counters. This is going to be the counters section. Things to think about when composing your army to fight the lizard men. I will be reiterating a few points I've made already, but trying to apply them more directly to different sections of the army that you should bring along. So the first good counter we need is a pretty obvious one, it's armor piercing. It's going to help with the Saurus armor, the Temple Guard armor, and all the monster armor. And that doesn't just have to come from elite infantry, it can come from any source that has armor piercing. Missiles, artillery, monsters, cavalry, magic, wherever it comes from, it's all going to be useful at taking down some of those key units that you're likely to see in a Lizardmen army. And it's not that your entire army needs to have armor piercing damage, it's just it makes them more versatile if they do. Armor piercing infantry can take on Saurus or it can get into some monsters and put damage on them although they will take a fair beating in the process but at least they can do something. Instead of armor piercing infantry you could put the money into armor piercing missiles or armor piercing monsters. There's many concoctions for many different factions. So think wisely about how you're going to be able to use your armor piercing. Next, how do we deal with all the harassing skirmishers of the lizard men, the chameleon skinks, the salamanders, the pterodons? Well, the downside of all those units and of any missile unit for the lizard men is that they're all pretty short range, only 80 to 100 range, which means they'll be easily outranged by most archers or crossbows or handguns. And given that all skink units are pretty squishy, you'll usually be able to hurt them significantly before they get in range to shoot your archer unit back if they can at all. And it's important to at least bring some kind of missile to the fight so that those harassing units don't take advantage of you. 
If you have nothing to deter them, they're just going to sit above you, fire at whatever they want, do whatever they want, and there's nothing you can do about it. If you're the Chaos, you could at least bring Horse Marauders. Or if you're the Vampires, who of course has no ranged units, you could bring something like a Magic Missile to try and deter them with. A Fireball is a pretty cheap spell that you can use pretty quickly over and over again. So it's important to bring something to deal with those Skirmishers, whether it's Missiles, they're probably the best choice, but of course flying units can get after and catch any of those potentially. Cavalry can get after the Skinks on the ground if they're quick enough. Ripidactyls can be a harassing unit in their own way, obviously they don't have a ranged attack but they can swoop down, do some damage and fly off. They're not greatly dangerous though, they're pretty squishy and their damage output seems to be a little bit lacking these days but still important to defend against them. And to talk about Skirmish Cav more specifically, they can be fantastic against the Lizardmen for numerous reasons. They can beat them at their own game. Lizardmen don't have any great ways to deal with Skirmish Cap. They don't have long range missiles, they don't have any fast flanking units that can catch them like Warhounds or Light Cav. It's only really their artillery that can effectively deal with them. So it's not too much of a challenge to keep your Skirmish Cav alive and keep the constant damage throughout the fight. And because of their mobility as well, they can offer fire support all over the map to anyone who needs it, all while keeping themselves out of trouble. So if there's a large monster on the other side of the armor, you can quickly maneuver your Skirmish Cav over to go and help out and they're a lot less vulnerable than missiles. It's very easy for a Carnosaur to run through and start messing up all your missiles and to disrupt them from firing. Can't do that with Skirmish Cap, they're just going to move out the way. Their damage is going to be a lot slower than missile units, so it's a trade-off, it depends how you want to play, but they can have that advantage that they can't be easily got rid of. It's pretty common for Pterodon rocks to be dropped on missile infantry, which will do a hell of a lot of damage to them. But Skirmish Cap have more chance of avoiding this because they're so damn quick. So Skirmish Cav is a must, to some degree, against the Lizardmen. And if I've said it once, I've said it 12 million times, destroy those single large units with range. They are the best choice, not the only choice, but certainly the best choice because A, the monsters can't escape them, B, you don't necessarily take any damage while you're shooting them, unless they're attacking one of your friendlies, of course, and C, if you've got armor-piercing or anti-large missiles, even freaking better. Now of course monsters can actually dodge missiles by simply running out of range, but that usually means they'll be out of the fight, which is good for us because we don't want them in the fight, so the longer they stay out of it, the better. Artillery of course, great for this, helps deter things, a cannon can focus a single monster down wonderfully, but the trouble is trying to protect them. You've got to be sure that you bring enough stuff to protect your missiles and artillery with, space them out, don't put them too close to each other, otherwise you're just going to get run over and disrupted by potentially one single monster. It's also good to realize that monsters are the best target for missiles because a lot of the other stuff has shields. Saurus warriors will usually come with shields and thus some of the missiles will be wasted. Some of the skinks will come with shields so that could be a waste. Some of the lords. So best off shooting the large units that don't have any protection from those missiles. Maximize the use of your ammo. Another way to counter the giant dinos is to bring something giant of your own and engage it in a monstrous duel. There are plenty of single large, anti-large monsters out there to engage any of their monsters and take them on. Of course, they have the Carnosaur, which is anti-large, so you could meet that with an anti-large monster and have an anti-large off, or you could engage any of their other monsters and do that anti-large damage. So if one comes over, you can send over your single large monster to go and sort it out, or at least to tie it up and stop it charging around, be a distraction for it, so it can't do whatever the hell it wants. And as you've hopefully picked up from this guide that missiles are a great way for taking down single large monsters, the Lizardmen can actually struggle with this themselves as they only have short range missiles. And no armor piercing missiles except Razordons who you don't see very often. So we can actually create the same problem for the Lizardmen that they give to us. Although they still do have a few tools to deal with these single large monsters so don't think them completely safe but those ways are a little bit more avoidable. So don't be afraid to bring those single large monsters because you can potentially beat the lizard men at their own freaking game. Now for a bit of an obvious one, of course anti-large units are a must to try and defend against all those monsters, but elite anti-large units can be great as a deterrent even if they can't get a hold of the monster. If you've got say a back line of missiles that needs protecting and a Carnosaur comes over, if you send over some Black Guard of Nagarond, that Carnosaur probably isn't going to stick around, it's going to run away. So they can act well as just a deterrent for keeping monsters at bay and protecting other units. And of course even better if they do get hold of it. Halberds in general are pretty good because they have not only the armor piercing damage but the anti-large bonus too. So they do both roles taking down the heavy armor of the Lizardmen monsters. Monstrous infantry can be another good call to bring along potentially, mostly as a roadblock more than anything. They can help contain those large monsters and stop them running around all over the place. 
They can be good for doing damage though as they're probably armor piercing, maybe even anti-large too. They could play an offensive role and help out your front line smashing some Saurus, or they could stay back and help defend the missiles, preventing any monsters from charging around at them too much. So monstrous infantry can definitely have its uses against the lizard men controlling things or putting down the damage, but the low leadership can make them a little bit vulnerable, so you need to use them wisely. And as I have previously mentioned a few times, high leadership is great for negating the fear and terror that all the monsters will bring. As I've said, you're not going to be able to bring high leadership across your entire army, probably. So you're going to have to make compromises here and there. But as long as that front line is strong, I think that's where the leadership matters most. Because if it breaks quickly and you've got missiles behind, they're going to get ruined. And it's not necessarily about having the perfect unit up front for dealing with what's coming. But if they have decent leadership, they can at least buy time for you to get something over to get the right matchup. Like these foot squires here, they're getting absolutely hammered by sacred croxagors, but they're sticking in there long enough with the help of the Grail Reliquay to get these halberds over to try and get rid of these goddamn croxagors so that I can at least pull those foot squires back and help them survive just a little bit so they can at least do something else rather than being completely wiped out. So consider how you're going to keep your leadership up on that front line. And lastly, something of note rather than a direct counter, but the Lizardmen units are mostly pretty expensive, so armies for the Lizardmen usually aren't huge, unless there's a lot of skinks been brought. Because those single large monsters are very expensive, the top lords can be very expensive, the Saurus are expensive, temple guards even more expensive, a lot of Lizardmen armies won't be that big, so you can either try and make a small strong army of your own, or you could try and outdo them with numbers. There's different options that you can play with with your own army style. Depends what faction you are and what playstyle you want to bring, but it's definitely worthwhile remembering that Lizardmen units are very expensive, so we don't necessarily need a huge army ourselves. So there's a bunch of counters we could bring against the Lizardmen. And remember, it's not that you're trying to bring all of those counters in one army, because it's probably not possible. You're picking three, four, maybe five of those and trying to work your army around them. There's many different builds and many different concoctions that you can come up with for dealing with the Lizardmen and using these counters wisely. It's just about making sure that we have the right tools to deal with anything the Lizardmen may throw at us. And now for the final section of this guide, I'm going to show you a few builds and put into practice what I'm talking about, learning to use these counters. So, on to some building theory. Here are three armies I use against the Lizardmen. One for Norska, one for the Empire, one for the Greenskins. They all encompass all the things I've been rambling on about for the last half an hour. None of them include necessarily everything I've just talked about in one army, but they're all working around those problems and counters. Up the top I've got a Norsegon army with a strong front line of Marauder Champions, more than capable of dealing with Saurus Warriors or Skink front lines. I've got Anti-Large in the Marauder Hunters and Throg and the Balefiend of Shadows who has Wither to reduce armor and Armor Sundering to reduce armor so he's a great combo with Throg. I've got Marauder Horsemasters who can help deal with harassing units, Skinks and Pterodons. The Hunters can also do that as well of course. And I've got the Warhounds for munching down Chameleons if they should come down or for chasing off routed large units or any strong unit. And then I've got trolls who can deal with many things. They can deal with Saurus, they can deal with the large, they can help out with cavalry. And then just a couple of units of Marauder Great Weapons to deal any extra armor piercing damage where it may be needed. And then for the Empire Army, I've got an Arch Lector who's going to give that leadership bonus, which is going to be useful for my front line, which is a lot of halberds and great swords. So I've got anti-large and armor piercing up on the front line. For my ranged units, I've got two armor piercing handgunners and then one huntsman for the anti-large missiles. Also got a cannon to help out with the anti-large as well. Then I've got some demigriffs for dealing with any cavalry that may come around or monsters if necessary. And then a couple of skirmish units for distracting and wearing down some of their skirmish units, outriders and war wagons. They can of course double up taking out large if they need to. They could reposition and flank behind some saurus and shoot them in the back to help out the front line. And then I've got a light wizard as well to net things in place primarily so it can be thoroughly blasted by all my firepower. And then for the greenskins, I'm trying to catch people out a little bit as this is a ranged build for the greenskins. Ridiculous, I know. Biggins up front, upgraded so their leadership is a little bit better. They can do okay against Saurus, but softening them up with all the missiles and the artillery is the key here so that infantry isn't so tough. And then I got a whole bunch of missile units, three arrow boys, two savage orc arrows, just a lot of arrows right there. And then I've got the rusty arrows as well, but they of course have the armor sundering, so they're very important when focus firing down those single large targets. I've also got the mangy marauders, great for harassing and skirmishing themselves, as well as dealing with any of those pterodons or skinks. And then just two units of Savage Orc Biggins to help protect the flanks and some Crimson Killers 
who I usually try to hide somewhere so that I can get a sneaky attack on some Saurus or Temple Guard with them. And my Lord is just a Goblin Shaman on a Wolf so he can stay mobile and he's got a couple of spells to help buff my army. So the first two armies are kind of similar, they've both got heavy front lines with lots of skirmish and ranged abilities and then the Greenskin army is more defensive which isn't something you expect from the Greenskins so you can catch people out sometimes. Now what if each of these armies was facing this Lizardmen army? It's a fairly basic well-rounded Lizardmen army, it's got a Saurus warrior front line, some Croxagors to maybe support that, a couple of Chameleon Skates, bit of Cavalry, a Carnosaur and Mazda Mundi on a Stegodon. Now all my three armies have the tools to deal with this Lizardmen army. The front line is Saurus Warriors and maybe Croxagors. I've got Marauder Champions, Greatswords, Halberds, Biggins up front that can deal with that and then maybe need some missile help to deal with the Croxagors. And then the skirmishing units of the Chameleon Skinks easily dealt with by the missiles of the Greenskins or Empire or maybe the Warhounds or Horsemasters for the Norskins. Cavalry can be countered by any of the anti-large units on all of these armies or the missiles or even the trolls for Norska. So none of those are really a worry. Master Mundi and the Carnosaur are going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with. We can blast them with all our missiles in the Empire and Greenskins army and with the Norskins as well actually with those Marauders. Maybe the Horsemasters if we can. So we've got everything there we need to deal with this kind of Lizardmen army. Okay what about a different Lizardmen army? Like this Lizardmen army. One focused around the Shredder of mother frickin Lustria. So a big powerful monster in that shredder, a couple of units of temple guard to act as some elite infantry to maybe draw some missile fire attention away from the shredder of Lustria, a bunch of skink units to try and flank round and harass missile units, a couple of skirmishers for harassing also, some cavalry to try and get round after any missile units, taking out missile units is going to be the key for this army to keep that shredder safe, and then they'll have Lord Croak dropping bombs and the Crocs have got Ancient charging around all over the place being disruptive too. So pretty much all of these armies are going to have to try and focus their missiles as much as they can on that Shredder of Lustria. It's got huge amounts of health, so we've got to try and bring it down as much as we can. It's going to be charging around potentially into our backline along with the Croxagor Ancient and the Skinks, messing up all of our missiles, potentially making life hard for those. So we're going to have to work hard to protect those and keep them firing. And then some of our front lines will do okay taking out those Temple Guard. we got the Great Swords and the Marauder Champions. And any missiles we can spare to go on those Temple Guard as well could help wear them down. The Skinks aren't too much of a worry. They're fairly easy to route with some of the tougher units that we've got. And again, we can try and chase off or shoot those Skirmishers, blast down Croak, and with a bit of luck, we should be able to defeat this army. So it's going to be a tough break. Whichever way you slice it, that Shredder isn't going down easy unless he's really badly misused by a player. So again, we've got plenty of tools in all the armies to defeat this one army. It is going to be pretty tough, but we've got lots of armor piercing, lots of anti-large, lots of missiles, lots of leadership. So we should be just fine. And for one more army, just to finish the day and make sure you understand this kind of theory crafting, it's going to be a numbers heavy skink army. We've got Gorok as a lord, so he's going to be hard to take down. Missiles aren't really going to affect him too much. We've got a lot of skinks, some armor piercing and some normal. Then a bunch of chameleon skinks that are going to wear us down if we can't get rid of them. The Umbral Tide, Colossodon Hunters, Pterodons and a Bastilodon Solar Engine all there to harass us and wear us down from range. So our front lines in all these armies should be okay provided we can make sure those armor piercing skinks don't do too much damage. We are going to be fairly harassed by all these flying units and that artillery is going to be wearing us down from afar as well with not a lot we can do about it necessarily unless we use our artillery to take that out but it is pretty tough because it is a Bastilodon. Failing that we'll have to try and get some missiles after it but this army shouldn't be too much of a worry. Try and blast down Gorok, try and get some armor piercing on him. Shoot the flying units of course, shoot the chameleon skinks, run them down with fast units if you have them. The horse masters, the hounds, the outriders, even the goblin mangy marauders may be able to do some work at taking out those skinks. But either way, whichever way you slice it, all three of my armies can comfortably deal with any of these three lizardmen armies and a bunch more. Because I've got a lot of good counters to a lot of their strengths and things they'll try to take advantage of. Having those flying units, having those large units charging around, having a tough front line, we're prepared for it. So build your armies preparing for these things and it'll give you the best chance of winning. And my builds are just one of millions of options and different playstyles that you can try to bring when you put your army together. But of course Total War is a game of many variables, but giving yourself a versatile army is going to help you deal with those variables. Not only the variables in the units but also the maps because you don't know necessarily where the enemy's going to go, where you're going to have to go, the terrain could affect things, what kind of magic has been brought along by both sides, a bit of luck is involved as well. So there's so many variables as I'm sure we all know so don't expect any build to concrete beat any other army because such certainty doesn't exist in war. So there you go, a guide to shutting down the goddamn Lizardmen. Hopefully you can stop them rampaging all over your precious troops and you can finally put the dinosaurs back where they belong in extinction.
I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.